small fee. I've been going to somebody because it just helps, you know, because mm. I have things that okay. I have to look at. Mm. So. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Uh, today, I took this topic for group number two, and once again, I invited Ia to be here. Uh, as we go on through life, sometimes we have so many things to do and so many identities that we take on. We might take on the identity and cling to that identity. I'm a mother. I cling to that. That is my main job in this world. Or you may have an identity of I'm come here to, to stop the war between uncle and grandfather. Or I have come, so many of us have, I have come, my identity is my priesthood, I am a priest, so I must live the life of a priest, or, or I am a, I'm a cop, or I am a professor, and besides that we have many other identities to which we, we identify ourselves. The real identity that sometimes we struggle with this identity is for a long time and not knowing which of my identities is driving my life. And if you go into your life, you will find that one particular identity sometimes dominates your whole existence. I am a priest, therefore I cannot do that. I am a, I'm a father, I am a mother, or I am a wife. That is my identity, therefore I can't do that. But life as it has done for me and it does, life plays so many tricks that it withdraws these identities from you. Especially for many people it happens when they have to switch from a very hectic, hectic uh, life, working life, career oriented life, professional life and it's over and now what? Yeah. So their identity has been destroyed and they spend some time and grief and sadness and in order to build up another identity. So I'm trying to, to ask you all to drop all identities and ask this question and cling to an identity that comes to you from inside, not imposed to you from the outside. Everyone at a certain junction of, the, of our lives, we come to this, uh, come to this turning point where we, who am I really? And that is what life does to us. It, it, it's like takes away from our hands till it leaves our hands empty. Then we say, I'm empty. I have nothing. Is my life wasted? Is my life meaningful? Now what do I do? I feel meaningless. I feel empty. I don't know how to go on. I'm, I'm at my wit's end. Please tell me who am I? We all belong to the light. Deep inside, finally, and in our, in our innermost being, there is a clarity that slowly dawns on us as we grow in wisdom, as we grow heart-centered, or as we grow age and body. One by one, relatives are taken away, and so our identity with our, with our husbands, our wife, our children is taken away. They are gone. We are left at home. The identity with the job is taken away. As you grow older, things that you thought <laughs> that you couldn't do without, now you find that they are torn away from you. And as they are torn away from you, again, that whole thing comes, 50, 60, and I have done nothing. I don't know now what to do with my life. Because our life was centered not on, not on being, but on, on doing. So we are now challenging ourselves to go into this way of life. The way of life that says, 
For just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also the Son gives life to whomever He wishes. What's the meaning of that? You have only one job, only one vocation, only one call to give life to whomever you wish to give. And that's what we are going to, to go deeply inside. I have come into this world and what did Jesus say? I came to this world that you may have life and life in abundance. And that's the meaning of being the light. Why the heck have you and I come into this world if not for that? So let us throw away all the other identities that we have clung to and accept this identity. I have come into this world as a life giver to others. Period. Ah, then your life begins to say, now how shall I give life to Maureen? How shall I give life to Michelle? How shall I give life to Karen? How shall I give life to Ia? How shall I give life? How shall I give life? So, okay, Maureen likes this. I will give her this and have, may have her experience life better than she ever experienced before. And so you go on in your life just making other people's life an abundant life. Why? Simply because you have chosen to be the son or the, or the daughter of the light of the universe. Have you chosen that still or do you still cling to the father and mother who gave you birth or do you cling to the father who created you? You always have a choice to cling to the, to the parents who gave you birth, who reproduced you or the one who created you from nothing, nothingness of himself. So we are called to give life to whomever we wish. And whomever we wish means to everybody. How do we know whom to give life to? We know to give life because as I told you once upon a time, God has put us in our own universe. Each one of us is in our own universe. You are in your own universe with your husband, your family, your parish, your church, your community. That is your universe and you are called to give life to the universe in which God has put you. I have been put in a, in a universe. You have been put, each of us. We are not here to, uh, to change the USA. We are not here to make America great again. We are not here to do anything. I am here and you are here to, to give abundance of life to the one who is sitting, standing in front of you. You do not get to choose. You do not get to choose. To, to, make a, to make a choice again comes from the ego. The ego chooses, I'll give life to her. No, no, she doesn't look so, so good, you know. Ah, no. Ah, that one is an attractive one. I will give life to her. <laughs> so it's it not, not, nothing of that, nothing of that. You give life to whomever uh, the wave, the, the, the ocean throws in front of you. Every wave that comes from the ocean of God's love is put in front of you and he's saying, now give life to this one. You don't choose. You don't have, you don't have that, that privilege to choose. And we are in the season of Easter and we just finished Christmas. These are the days of, of holidays. And during these seasons of, of holidays, which are usually uh, holy days, that's where I find in my life a, a huge push and pull. Because these holidays and, uh, and holy days of Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, birthdays are those days when the earthly family comes together. Okay, somebody's birthday, let us have a birthday party or there is Thanksgiving. For me, it is, uh, I uh, always have this because we never had such thing called Thanksgiving. But after I came here, everybody is asking, you going for Thanksgiving? Where are you going for Thanksgiving? Where are you going for Thanksgiving? And I have to look into my heart and say, I'm going to have a Thanksgiving party of one. 
I am going to have a birthday party of one. I am going to have a celebration of one. And for, for many people, it's maybe that, it, and it's for me, one, I am one by choice. But for many of us, we are not one by choice. We are one because we don't want to go for that party because we can't, we can't uh, tolerate all those that, that hook, uh, uncles uh, yawning the whole time. And that Auntie Jane, pack, 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 she keeps on talking till I go, till I go nuts. And that grandmother like that, and this, like that, and that. And those kids, they are terrible. I can't, there's no peace, what their moms are doing. I'm not going for that party, I want to be out. So either you have thrown the, everybody out and rejected them, or on the other hand, they have said, you're a pain, we're not inviting you for the party. So holidays are sometimes great reminders of either the family and society and uh, culture rejecting us and we rejecting all of them. The family rejecting you or you may be a family of one. And here, how can you be the light? And yet we are called to be the light. But the light wants you. Being in the light is not a matter of exposing yourself to the light. It's not a matter of that. Being, being the light, being in the light, is not, you do not go and expose yourself to the light. You do not go into the light to get more light. You are it already. So being is not like, you know, I'm going to be holy now. So therefore to be holy, I must go to church every day, and put myself in the presence of Jesus so His light will shine on me. No, no, no. Jesus gave His life for you because you are the light, not in order to make you shine brighter. Nothing can make you shine brighter than what you already are. It is only your ego that tells you your light is going off, do something about it. And so all your life you keep on putting more gas so that the light will be brighter and brighter and brighter. And there you end up because you have, you have stopped, you have never believed that you have been created by infinite light itself that cannot, that doesn't need to, to be edited or changed or do all those things that we have. You need not judge yourself to see how much of the light is in you. Don't we say this? I am going for Father Nelson's spirituality class and you know what? I am getting there. I am getting there. I am getting there. There is no such thing as getting there. You are there already. The whole, the whole thing of spirituality class is not to, to give you a push so that you go there. No, it's, it's telling you, you are that, you are that, you are that, you are that. You are that. There is no doubt about it. If there is a spirituality class, it is to remove the doubts of who you are. To take away from you the doubts. So there is no such thing as, I am getting there. Or, you know, uh, I will get there. I am trying my best. I am doing all the exercises and I, I take off. What, what am I doing? To, okay, I, I did that exercise and I did this and I did this and I did this. I think I have reached somewhere. <laughs> Again, that is a, an ego call telling you that if you do then you are. You are not are because of what you do. You are because you are. And what did God say? I am who I am. So you also say I am, I am who I am. I, I, I cannot be what I am not. I am, I are. You are what you are. She is who she is. That's it. No matter how much you try to escape this planet, because of traumas, of frustrations, of PTSD, of, uh, uh, of rejection, of betrayals and all this thing and you feel like jumping out of the... How many, how many of us have not contemplated uh, suicide at least once in their life? I have contemplated twice, just finishing it off. So how many of us have not made it a... Made, uh, had that, that thing in the end like, this is, this, this is meaningless, this is not doing anything and... I don't want to continue this misery. I don't know if there is life after this or not, but now I'm, I'm finished. I'm tired. How much you try to escape this, 
no matter how much you question your presence here. People who go into depression and all whole time, they question, why am I here? Why am I here? Why? And they just can't get that answer. Because the more they ask that question, the more they fall into the dumps. And why do they fall into the dumps? Because they don't want to accept the truth of their being. The truth of you is you're the light of the world. Period. So, no matter how much you question your presence, no matter the things do not go your way. Very often we think, when I become spiritual, I'll have a lot of peace. Biggest joke in history. You will not have a lot of peace when you become spiritual or when you think you have become spiritual. You'll have the same thing, only you look at it differently. You will look at it differently. Then peace does not come from what happens in your life. Peace comes from how you look at, at life that, that, that comes in front of you. And you look at the light and the life that is poured into you as the light of the world. So today, again, radical decision to be made, which you can say, I came that they may have life and life in abundance. So tonight when you go home, ask yourself, do I still need my life to be abundant? And if the answer is yes, then you have to tell yourself, it's because I still don't believe I'm the light. And there you hold on. And then you ask the next question. What is stopping me from believing that I am the light? Nothing. What is stopping you from believing that you are the light? Nothing except your idiocy. Saying you are not the light. Yeah. So nothing is stopping me from believing that I am the light. Just as nothing is stopping me from believing that I am I'm in the darkness. What is stopping me from believing that I am in the darkness? Nothing. So what can stop me from believing that I am the light? Nothing. Except one is true, the other is false. But your belief makes you miserable or your belief makes you mm, happy. Belief makes you joyful. And this is how you heal your inner core of unworthiness. Bottom line of everything of our behavior is that we feel that we are not worthy of being the light. I am not worthy of being God's child. I am not worthy to be called the Christ. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Bottom layer of, of unworthiness. It also comes from, 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 a, from the greatest temptation that we have ever, ever, ever got. And that temptation is... I have been abandoned by God. He is not with me. He is far away. He doesn't care for me. My life is miserable. I pray and pray and pray and He never listens. I have been abandoned. And you know why I have been abandoned? Because I am not worthy of His love. And so you spend your life in blood, sweat and tears. In utter nonsense. Because that is not true as yet. So by getting into this, this way of life which says I am the, I'm the light no matter what. I cannot be anything else and this is what I believe, this is what I accept. I accept the truth of who I am. And there you heal, gradually you begin to heal the core of your unworthiness. So what do you say? I want to heal the core of my unworthiness. So, I will go and I will learn how to pray. So you learn how to pray. And somebody comes and tells you, you have not prayed until you really meditate. And so you go to learn meditation. When you go to learn meditation, they tell you, you have to close your eyes and so you close one eye and try to see if everybody else has closed them or not. <laughs> yeah, close your eyes. Then after that you have to breathe in and breathe out. So you say, okay. Now we 
ego tells us, you are breathing too fast. Okay, I'll breathe slowly. <laughs> slowly. Then the ego says, you are breathing too slow. Watch the others, how they are breathing. And then you say, if I watch the others, I have to open my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Can you see how even in these things we have uh, the manipulation of the ego and we don't, we don't, we, we don't even, uh, we don't even have the guts to say, okay, now you shut up. So, then you have to sit down like that, you have to breathe in and breathe out, and then you have to have a level of peace, then you, there you are. But what is meditation? Meditation is a sneak preview of the life that is coming to you. Life says, you know what, you can do this meditation, but I am going to give you the real meditation. And as life goes ahead, life gives you the real meditation. You go there, you fall down uh, on the sidewalk and you break your hip. There you are. In six weeks, you can't move at all. You are in a meditation pose. You just can't move. <laughs> because you are in caste and this and that. And then you keep on cursing and cursing and cursing. But life says, you wanted to meditate. No, I am giving you. I am giving you the chance to be immobile for the next six weeks. And you say, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to be in an AC room. I, just, I wanted to be my legs to be on the ground. I wanted, I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted. And life said, pa, 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 pa. No, mm -hmm. I'm teaching you how to meditate. I'm teaching you. Mm -hmm. So you remain immobile. Then life says, I will teach you how to be silent during meditation. So you, you go to office and there you find Everybody talking at the top of their voice the whole day and you can't do your work over there. Everybody jabbering, 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 jabbering. And you go and tell them, shut your mouth, shut your mouth. And life says, no, I want you to learn silence. You, you are meditating now. So I've taught you how to be immobile for six weeks. Now I'm teaching you silence. Life is whole time offering us meditation. To be silent, to be immobile to learn how to breathe in, just to, to make of our life a constant breath of the Holy Spirit inside and outside. And so, we have to thank life when, we, when these things of so-called catastrophes come our way, when so-called things which are the real meditation, the whole of life, the whole of the life that you and I are leading is a meditation. And when we sit down and meditate, we are only preparing, taking a shot, so that when life gives us a course in meditation, we'll be ready for it. We'll know how to be silent, we'll know how to be immobile. So that is the real, everybody else will tell you why to, why to um, meditate and how to contemplate and all. But here I'm telling you, 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 you do that so that you're ready for the real meditation that life is offering you every day. Doesn't that come therefore? You are there and you say, yes, I feel so peaceful. I feel so peaceful when I am sitting like this and doing like that and all. Okay, life brings you across. Therefore, a husband who just retired and because he is so frustrated with his retirement that is taking all his frustration on you. You say, I can't even breathe in this house. And life says, no, I'm teaching you how to breathe mm -hmm. with your frustrated husband. Mm -hmm. And with your breath and silence, you will remove his frustration. But I didn't want him. Now he's become too much. He, because he was all like that. And so you have, you, have, you have forgotten that life is teaching you to meditate. Which means life is saying, be still and know that I am. So every moment of our life, if we can just be still, every moment. So we don't have to be still only when we are meditating. We have to make meditation our life. And we have to make our life our meditation. Why? 
so that through our meditation, acceptance of life and alliance of life, the light that is in us burns brightly to give light to the world. Otherwise, sitting down and doing meditation, your ego will say, you are not doing it well enough, you are doing it badly, you have forgotten the third point that father told you. Wait, what's the third point? I forgot. Yeah, was there a third point? No. And so you go. And so you've lost everything because you want, like the Pharisees, they want to wash their hands and wash their feet and wash their toes and wash their this and do the that, do everything except worship God. So my dear friends, meditation is preparing you for the stillness of life. Be still and know that I am God. Life does everything for you. It gives you the broken leg. It gives you a, a terrible husband and all this it gives you so that you may learn to meditate. It takes you out from the job you love and gives you a, a terrible other job. It removes the boss and gives you another boss. It, it keeps you still. You learn to be alone and yet fulfilled. That is meditation. Meditation not sitting on the chair and pretending to be fulfilled. Meditation is going through life even if it means to go alone and yet be fulfilled at the same time. You don't get fulfilled by sitting on a chair for 20, 27 or 24 7. You get fulfilled by 24 7 fulfilling what life is bringing to you. You learn to be alone and you learn that you are not here to please others. You are not here. You are not here to please others. You are here to give life to them, not to please them. Because what is the meaning of to please others and to give life to them? It means two things. When you want to please others, you want gratitude back. And when you give them the light, you are giving them an overflow. Like a, like, a, like a fruit tree dropping the fruit, you come and take it or don't take it. You are giving that light to others and you are, you are grateful when they accept it. And if they reject it, you are grateful all the same. So, there is a big difference here. You are not here to please others. And in this <clears throat> way, your mind opens to true wisdom. And as you go through this process of, uh, of people not being pleased with you, you go through your process of not being fulfilled, you go through all this process, your awakened heart loves you through the whole process. Your awakened heart holds you and says, I am with you. I am the good shepherd comes to you and says, I will take you to green pastures. The good shepherd comes to you and says, I will give you the water of life. The good shepherd comes to you and he says, I will give you my body. But you know, I am not going to take away the problems from your life. This is the thing that, that is bringing you closer to me and making your light shine brighter. So, what does it teach us in order to be the light? We welcome everything with a huge, innocent, loving embrace. Everything. Everything. There is no such thing as failure or success. There is no such thing as good or bad. There is no such thing as right or wrong. There is no such thing as satisfying or not satisfying. Everything is, is, uh, is food for you. Everything. So that's what we says, and your heart, well, uh, your innocent heart welcomes everything that comes in your life, and does not stop it. But we do not know how to, how to welcome everything. We have not, nobody has taught us, nobody has taught us how to, uh, how to, how to live our life. Nobody has taught us, and so we, we, we believe. And this is the belief that we have, and that's the setup. The setup. We believe I am happy when I get the things I want and life goes the way I want it to go. And that's how we have been trained. So the young child wants wants the toy. And you take away the toy, ah, it will cry and howl till you don't get sleep and you say, okay, you take it. And the child says, now I am happy. I am happy when I get the things I want. And we have not grown out of the childhood. 
and I am unhappy when things that I want are taken away. So you take away again uh, a soft toy from a child and you take it away, the child will howl to glory till you get something else. And But dear, we have trained ourselves to be happy only when we get the things we desire, delectable desires. When we get the cakes we want and the pastries we like and the Dunkin' Donuts and all those things, that will make us happy. And if I don't get the things I like, I will show the world and I will get it. I am I'm, I'm a go-getter. I will know how to get it. I will stamp over others. I will do what I want and I will struggle and struggle and struggle. And you know what? God will help me to get what I want. Oh foolish person. In the first place, God, gave, God has told you, I am not going to give you this in order to teach you how to make your life into a meditation. And meditation helps you bring out the fire of God's love. <clears throat> what is it in your life you wish to be different? And all the things in your life that you wish to be different are things that are blocking the light from the world. All the things, I want this to be different, I want that to be different. I want my son to be better, I want my daughter to be worse. I want my husband to, to have more money, I want my uncle to have I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. You believe that if you get what you want, you will feel good. Today throw that belief out. I will feel good whatever comes my way. I have decided to feel good. Nobody can tell me because I'm the light. I'm not going to get light from anybody else. Everybody is coming to the light. I'm the light. You do not know how to feel the way you want to feel without certain things coming in your life and certain things going away from your life. And if you believe that, you're suffering from spiritual hypnosis. You've hypnotized yourself to, to do only that and nothing else but that. Are we therefore creatures of, of hypnotized persons? And hypnotized person actually uh, is run by, by the hypnotizer. The hypnotizer says, okay, now look up and look down. Now dance. Now smile. And so the hypnotized person just does this action. So we have trained our desires to hypnotize us. And so when our desires are met, smile. When they are not met, so how long are we going to live in a spiritual hell? But the light that is in you accepts you because the light knows. The light says, feel as you wish. Be as you wish. Feel it now. Come as you are. Nothing will be taken away from your life. Nothing can be added to it. You don't have need any desires. You don't need, you don't need, you don't need. Come as you are. The light that you are is, is with open arms says, You're my baby and I accept you. And you, you, st you go on with life and life gives you all the occasions to, to make your, that is fuel to the light. All the things that come in your life are fuel, burning the light of God that is there in you. No matter what occurs in your life, do not tick off the list of wrongs that you have done. Some, some of us will live over and over, over and over again. Okay, we are sitting down, we are thinking about and then something comes. I, I did wrong and that's why I'm suffering. Uh, I was, uh, this week I... I'm, I'm hearing the confessions of children who are seven, six, seven, seven and a half. And so they come and say, Father, I'm suffering. <laughs> See, you're laughing. But for them, that suffering is real. That suffering is real. Why are you suffering? My sister annoys me. And that for them, and you know, and then, I hate her. <laughs> and that's the biggest sin that they have. Mm. And I have to forgive that sin. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? So on, on that level, except on, on, a, on a macro level, we are in the same boat. We are all in the same boat of that. 
So ticking off the list of wrong that I have done, my sister annoys me and I hate her and that's the wrong thing I have done, no. So we have to move out from that of believing how much your life is messed up. Some people just can't move, just can't move because they can't decide, they can't accept the truth that they are the light and so my life is messed up. I don't know what to do. I have, I have the family one side, I have my job the other side, I have my country the other side, I have, I, have a I have a court case going on, I, have this. I don't know what to do, I'm stuck. And when, because you believe your life is messed up, you believe you're not the light. Even if it is messed up, you are the light. You are the light, whatever. Or question how your life is the way it is. So we have this again, people having some issues and problems, they say, why me? Yeah, why me? Yeah, why me? Because they believe that, uh, that life should not be that way. I have done nothing evil, I have done nothing wrong, but life is that way. So I told you, life is providing you with a, with a course in meditation. Life is teaching you that even in tragedies, illnesses and pain, happiness, joy, freedom and unconditional love is totally and completely present in you. Or are you going to say the other way? Because uh, I have a tragedy, illness and pain, I cannot be happy. No, it is always present in you. You have to tap into it and say, I have the, the happiness with which I was created can, has never been taken away from me. But these things are clouding my vision of the happiness that is in me, of the joy that is in me, of the unconditional love of God which is totally present in me. That makes the, your light shine. That makes your light uh, shine brighter and brighter. In this way, you can have love for yourself, joy in your heart and feel completely free no matter how much pain you are in. So this is a magic formula. Just with the acceptance that, that, that happiness, joy, freedom and unconditional love is totally a thousand percent present in me, then I can have love for myself, joy in my heart and feel completely free even if the world is falling apart. So there is a thing in the saying, though, though I walk in the valley of darkness, no evil shall I fear. For you are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. On the book of Psalms. Isn't that a beautiful yeah. thing? Yeah. Even if I walk in the valley of darkness, even if in this way uh, you have tragedies, illnesses, pain, joy, freedom, unconditional love is always even... You are there with me. You are there with your crook and your staff. And this is this is Christian life, accepting the the role of God, who is your light. He's never, never, never forsaking you. When you are in deep illness, chaos, and traumas, do not lose heart. Take courage. Take courage. It need it needs you to change, and not wait for things to change for you. So much of our life is spent waiting for things to change, waiting for Godot, waiting, waiting for something to come and, and, and reach you and give you something. So, needs you to change. And change what? Change your mind and change your heart about the truth of who you are. That will set you free. That will set. What's the use of praying if you are not accepting the truth of who you are? What's the use? There's no use at all. Accept the truth of who you are. Say to yourself, I do not know how joy, love and freedom are totally present in me, but that's the truth. <laughs> he was so just getting so excited. Yeah, yeah. So happy. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> Take courage. Say to yourself, I'm, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go through life peacefully, sit where I am and let the truth seep in. So you tell life, you teach me and I'm going to accept it. That's what meditation truly is. 
Second, quit searching for the meaning. That's another trap that we have. When things go badly in our way, what we do? Now let me see what's the meaning of that. <laughs> God has sent it for a particular reason. He wants to, to screw up my life. And so I want to find out what wrong have I done? Oh God! Okay, you're a good God, you know. Mm, yeah, you're a good God. But <laughs> please tell me why you sent this thing. So, instead ask yourself, what do I need right now? And then the way that life is opening before you, you have to tell yourself, this is what I need and that is life is giving me this right now. I may not like it. I may feel like uh, throwing it in the garbage can. But this is what life is offering me now. And it only means it is offering me that because I, I need it. It's offering me that because it knows that that's the way for me to reach my, my goal uh, uh, sooner than, than later. What is it that the other person is not giving me? So we again go through life. What, the, what we want from the other person? We want appreciation. We want praise. We want love. We want um, ex expectation to be lived in. So, what do I need that I can give to myself? You can give yourself appreciation. You can give your, and say, tell, tell yourself, I am the light of, of the world. I am I'm the son of God. I am the, uh, I've been sent into this world so that other people may have life in abundance. That's good. That's good. And let me do that. You don't need praise. You don't need appreciation. You don't need all this. This is hard wisdom. Because every moment is giving you exactly what you need. Every moment. What pulls you out of the light? So this is another way. Sometimes we have uh, like people like Michelle and uh, uh, what is that? Caregivers. You know, some people I have who come to me to the uh, VA. They help me there. Some people go on their own to give Holy Communion and all. And very often they get they get trapped in in the in the people they are serving. So the people that we are serving sometimes. They have a victim status. The world is bad. There's, you know, the nurses keep on shouting the whole night. I do not know why they come only near my door and keep on gossiping. And then the something, the food is cold. The, that is that, the, that is that, the, that is that, the, that is that. <coughs> and so, uh, uh, the light that you are goes to them. And because they are so forceful and they are so... Uh, adamant in what they are telling you, they drag you into you also becoming a victim like them. I have done this so many times till I find myself, oh my gosh, I'm a victim like that guy. Instead of he, me pulling him out, he has pulled me in. <laughs> and because of lack of experience, sometimes we get dragged into them and we feel sorry for them and they make us feel more sorry and more sorry and more sorry till you are flat on the ground and you say, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's true. It has happened and I have seen it happened to me twice. Uh, once it happened to me when I was taking care in India of a, of a terrible group of alcoholics. They were drinking and drinking and drinking and spoiling their lives and the children and everything and, and that and I was so much involved in that and I was a young priest, I might have been about 30, 35 in that. Looking and feeling so miserable about them and miserable about their wives, miserable. That I used to get up in the night at around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock and look at the floor and say, ah! <laughs> So, I, I went to a friend, I went to a doctor and I said, you know, this has never happened to me. I do not know why I get up in the night and scream. So he says, where are you working? And I told him, I'm working with the alcoholics and all. I love the job and everything. He said, stop working there. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, why? I said, he said because you're, you're taking their emotions and making them your own. You, you, you have to be professional about it. You can do all the things that you want, but don't get emotionally involved in that. 
you don't become them they have to become you so you so i learned to stand my ground and become who i am and tell them harsh words even if it meant first of all like i was molly coddling them you know mm -hmm. but after that i learned this is the right way and that's the wrong way so i started telling them no shut your mouth and you sit on that but i had to go against my character mm -hmm. and learn it then i learned it and that how i did a lot of miracles among the alcoholics but first i had to get up screaming the whole night so <laughs> you don't have to take on their pain in order to heal them you are the light traveling with their pain let their pain surrender to your light you just wait and stay open the light is a companion to pain you be a companion to their pain don't make their pain a companion to you can other people's victimhood vengeance anger sadness lead you to step out of your light if your light is not shining powerfully it makes you step out and you become a victim like them so we keep space in our hearts for everyone we came to give them life and abundance we set them up for success we show them how we wish to be treated by treating them lovingly we do not judge but move into alignment with them we give them what they need not what they want every response of ours is a healing response and their response in turn heals us that's the meaning of you are now giving them the light and they begin shining their light and returning that light back to you and so where there was one light and there was darkness you you have gone and lit another light so we become the lighters of lamps so that is why i'm telling you know, the people in group 2 to begin to shine the lamps in the parish do something for the church do something for the poor do something do something do something other you say okay i receive holy communion every sunday go home and go to sleep for the rest of the week because i will take care of everything else no we have to to do that a healing response so that the healing response heals us so therefore life asks us to question questions are you courageous are you discerning are you decisive compassionate and still not be the character other people want you to be so still not be them other people want you to be to be uh, what is that uh, to be um, soft they want you to be fuzzy they want you to say hello how are you <laughs> they want you to be gentle they want you to be uh, to be all those things but they don't want you you to be a strong kind compassionate person they want you to be uh, a, a weak um, slimy or <laughs> that soft you know all that tasteless person are you ready to turn away from those who wish to go in the opposite way are you ready to turn are you ready to turn away from from your from your husband are you ready to turn away from your son are you ready to turn away i'll tell you of a saint who turned away uh the the love that Saint Francis of Assisi as a young man had for his father was tremendous. His father was the richest man in Assisi. He was a trader uh, in dealing in fine cloths. So when Francis of Assisi got a change and he heard a voice saying I want you to build my church and that voice kept on haunting him. he could not find the meaning so he went because the 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 life in in the town of ssc was too loud he went for meditation far away into into the forest of ssc and he stayed there his father went and called him because he wanted he was his son he wanted his son to carry on the business he is getting old and this guy is gone to the forest what the hell is wrong with him <laughs> so he called him and one day francis refused to come refused to come one day he had a town meeting and in the middle of the town he brought francis and he, he told francis you better come home and all the other people said you better come home you better come home and to the whole village and everybody and the, the argument went up and down he says no i am called for something else what are you called i don't know yet but i am called for something else so you so the father said see 
I have given you everything till today. Even the clothes that you wear, everything is mine. So what did Francis do? He took his clothes off. And he he dropped them. his clothes down yeah. and naked went away. Wow. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to turn away from those who wish to go in the opposite way? So Francis S.S.C., the first act that he did was he cut himself off from his own father. And many saints have done that. Are you willing to allow others to see you the way others to see you the way they see you? Not as you wish to be seen? Do you see the light within you? Or are you waiting for others to see it? Life provides us with 40 days. 40 days means it gives us a plenty of time to go the way it wants us to go. There may be periods in your life when people around you get sick, dependent or die. A bunch of them will betray you. Many turn on you and blame you for no reason at all. So you lose friends by making yourself anew. Life is taking away the darkness to let the light be radiant. It will strip you of all the reference points of your life. And this is absolutely true. One thing I thought that I would never be stripped away was from my younger brother, 17 years. I thought we will be good brothers till the end of my life. Last year we decided not to see each other for the rest of our lives. That's it. So life teaches us that, that uh, you... What is that? You, you lo life takes away the darkness. So maybe my brother was, a, was an aspect of darkness in my life. Maybe my sister was an aspect of darkness in my life. And so instead of giving the light and giving life in abundance to these people who, whom the, who, are, who are my universe, I was giving light to that guy who is in New Jersey. So life said, forget about it. You, you, give, you, you give all your, your thing to the people of Croton and Hudson. So life is taking away the darkness. It will strip you of all the reference points in your life. So at this moment in my life, I have no reference point. I'm not an Indian. <laughs> I'm not a, um, what should I, I'm not, a, not an uncle. I'm, I'm not a brother to anyone. I have brothers and sisters, but I'm not a brother to them. And they are not my brothers and sisters to me. And that's what Jesus says, who is my father, my brother, my this and that. Slowly over the years, without my willing it, it has taken place. And you know what? I feel good about it. That's the whole difference. I don't say anything bad or anything wrong. I feel good about it. And it's lighter in, in, in my spirit. When all the strips you up, all the reference point in your life, then you can say, I am the light. I don't need other lights to come into my life. Therefore, your ego ha it goes through these things in order that your life uh, become the light. It goes to periods of loneliness. What I said, life gives you a broken, li broken hand, leg so that you become immobile, you become lonely, you become confused, you become frustrated. These are the trials of the awakening Christ. So which of us has not felt all those four things? And so when you feel that, all you have to say, the Christ in me is being awakened. Or you can say, I'm adding fuel to the light so that it will, buy, it will burn. These are the fuel, loneliness, confusion, frustration, and pain. Our pain are fuels that go to make the light burn brighter. So this is what life says. You're the light, just be the light. Nothing more, nothing less. Just be, and as you wish, which means you love everyone belong to the light. Feel it, baby. Just <laughs> feel it. Thank you very much. Great. This would be good for our retreat. The be light. the light. Be the light, I know. Maybe yes. you could do it, Father. I don't mind. I can, because it's ready. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's perfect for the They have it the in retreat. the schedule. I can show it to Yeah, I'll have to talk. That's yeah. beautiful. I don't know if you talk to uh, Regina. Yeah. Because... And it really, one of the points when you're saying, when you feel the joy and everything else, the um, excitement, 